Okay, so if I'm a bug and I'm right here at ground level, I'm gonna look for the easiest access point to a home. All right, welcome back everybody, it's Ben. We uh, went long-winded on our how do bugs get in your house video. So I split it up into two parts. So today we're gonna see part two. This is, uh, we pick up just on the outside of a freshly framed house. Then we'll move on to more of the finishing stages, sheetrock and trim and stuff like that. So that's what we're doing today. Okay, <laughs> so we're walking through everybody's backyards. Thank goodness nobody lives here. Yeah, right there's now. nobody here yet. But this ground has been here for ever. Wow, right? amazing. So it you've just got fall. generations of bugs that have lived in these areas. Not only that, they've trucked in some uh, topsoil loads. Ooh, some fresh bugs from other areas. So now you've got bugs from other areas. <laughs> Your bugs, because they're doing construction in this area, that doesn't mean they're dead and that doesn't mean that they're leaving because they don't like their soil being churned up. If anything else, it gets them moving and looking for new places to hide and to live because you're disturbing their home. So you guys heard the old saying, there's, there's old money and new money, okay? <laughs> there's old bugs and there's new bugs. It just depends on the level of, of how old your home is and the area that you've moved into. Yeah. Old bugs and new bugs. I like the old bugs. All right, I fell in a hole. <laughs> they have dug this hole to run utilities from the road to the home. So you may be getting problems from the road because they have access through these pipes. This goes right underneath their stem wall, their footing, okay? That goes right into the home underneath that slab that we talked about that was poured over. That, as you get separation, the bugs come right in. So your bugs that typically live in these areas as they tear up other uh, ground or as the, you know, the homes get more established, your bugs are just gonna come and work down these pipes and come right under. There's moisture in these areas at all times. And they'll come right under these uh, stem walls and right up into your home. We're across the street now, so everything's gonna be mirror image. Flip-flopped. Bedrooms are over here, kitchen's over there. Anyway, I'm confused. This one, they just finished sheet rocking, mudding and taping. So it's gonna look way different now. The so, problems still exist, you just can't see them as well. What's the what's the deal with, because I'm seeing gaps everywhere that there's drywall. You know a little bit better about this than I do. Is there a, an, an amount that has to be left, uh, a gappage from drywall to the ground? I think what he's talking about is this over here. So if you ran your drywall all the way to the concrete as the home either shifts or the wind blows or anything changes, it's gonna jam that mud and tape or the sheetrock itself and it could crack it. So they hang it off a little bit just so that it doesn't sit against anything that could potentially settle or move. Which again, your, your board is sitting right on this stem wall your bugs can come right through again. But they do it everywhere throughout the home and they do that throughout the home because Ben has told me, <laughs> thank you, Ben, they run carpet. In order to get the carpet and the tack board up under those areas, they have to have a gap, okay? That's not what you're yeah. All right, so this is the basement. There's going to be a toilet here and they've had to bust the concrete up a little bit to get the pipe in the right spot. So they will fill that in with a quick creed or something, but there's obviously gonna be fractures and cracks and stuff there. So that's gonna be a weak spot, especially down the road for termites to come but in. But not only that, and this, this kind of pisses me off and it should upset you guys. Whenever they do this, all the debris from the construction, just like the front stoop, it's down in there. That's wood, that's cellulose. They're gonna fill that in and then they've got food for the bugs right there. Well, it's termite bait at this point, just like the front stoop. So there's not gonna be too much. So here is the, uh, this is a wall. 
it's going to be built out in front of the other half wall behind it. So anything that's back there, we can't get to. Not from the inside. So any of the bugs that come in are behind this wall. They can get to anything up above and behind and we'll never see them unless they decide to come out the bottom, which is unlikely. They're going to go up and look for moisture. So we can treat the baseboards, which is fine. But again, they're going to grab those boards, those two by fours or the, uh, the beams or even the pipes, and they're going to go somewhere else in the home. They may be coming in right here on this side and end up on the other side of the house because that's where the food is. The other thing that we find too, is a lot of your problems are gonna be at the ground level. This window goes right to the outside, to the ground, okay? A lot of times I'm gonna see your spiders, your roly polies, any of that kind of stuff more at the ground level coming up into areas like this that have easy, easy access. All right, so let's show you the fireplace at this point. Here, is the fireplace and you can see the whole wall looks nice and pretty it's all sheetrock but that, we don't have our pictures up yet of our family on yeah, here <laughs> it doesn't affect that that's open back there and that they can come out the louvers of the fireplace and look at this all the way around plus there's gaps and holes in here but where they put this in you've got access points for the bugs to come in and out of the other problem is these outlets Okay, they don't seal up all the way around that. They just put a plate over it. Your bugs can come right in through those gaps, any outlet throughout the home. And we do, we have a lot of homeowners that talk about, hey, I've got ants coming out of my outlets. Well, that's because that's their access point. Or they follow the wires and the wires come through a hole in the back of it. All right, we got to look at the kitchen here because um, it looks way different than it did before. So the window, and then where the sink goes, we've got plumbing lines and everything there. You can see down at the bottom that there's a gap from where the sheetrock doesn't go all the way to the floor. When they put the, the uh, tack strip for the carpet in and then the trim board on the bottom, there's gonna be that little major super highway that the bugs can go back and forth. So if they come out here, you could see them way over there and not know that they came from maybe over here. So it cracks me up because a lot of times when, um, especially in nicer homes, what they'll do is when they put the, the pipe, the drain pipe right here, they'll actually put a coupler that goes over this so it hides this hole in the wall, but they don't seal that off. And so your bugs are gonna be coming through. A lot of times if you pull that plate off, you can actually fill those in. I love this too. They foamed where this came through the floor, but look at this. Those bugs just, hello, little hatch door. How you doing? <laughs> so again, it's not normally your window that's the problem, it's what's around it. And so it, you it gives you a false sense of, hey, they're coming in my window, but they're, they're typically not, they're coming in these pipes. And you're saying, okay, so I've done my part to seal up all these little areas. Guys, when it comes down to it, they're coming in from the outside you're gonna to have to seal off all those areas where they're coming in from the outside. So now that we're walking up the road. Losing our weight for the day. Well, we have to because <laughs> look at us. Two fat pest control guys. <laughs> we uh, wanted to do this because it's a little different and not to scare everybody about your house because everybody's home is built pretty much the same way. I mean, you're going to have entry points no matter what. But we want you to be aware that there's there's places that they can come in. Well, it's called pest control for a reason, right? Yeah, and you need it because of all this. <laughs> so there are things that you can seal up and we're, we're gonna try and show some of that down the road a little bit. Yep. But uh, we wanted to show you kind of what happens with a house from beginning to almost end. So you get a, a better picture of what you're dealing with. All right, good morning, everyone. It's Ben. It's a couple days later. Uh, I'm up early. Ryan's not here yet. But working on this video, I wanted to catch a couple of things that we didn't get last time. There's a house that they're finishing, trimming, doing final electrical right now. So we'll go take a look at that. I want to show you kind of what it looks like after. So you see all the stages. So let's go down and take a look. 
Okay, rolling up to this house, it's uh, they're almost ready to put the veneer on the front. They painted the foundation and the walls on the side. Paint makes stuff look really good. Um, it's hard to tell how well it's sealed without really getting up close, but looks good, doesn't it? Uh, can you guys see any hidden gaps? I'm sure they're there. Uh-oh. So right here, we've got a uh, failure to communicate with the tape measure. They left a little gap but it shows that there's another gap right here by the edge of the fireplace. And then this board obviously isn't tight all the way across. Same thing over there. While they did a good job putting it up, this is basically what you get in the end. You've got just glue on rocks. And then right here, there's a good spot for them to get in. And all that stuff down and below where the, the siding met the top of the concrete, you remember what that looked like. And all they did was glue rocks over the edge of it. All right, so we came inside. They were working on finishing everything up. Countertops are in. Take a peek at the plumbing underneath here. No seals, just holes in the cabinets putting on electrical covers downstairs, but they're getting up here next. They're working on the fireplace, getting some tile glued on. They've got a mantle that just attaches to the wall. Looks nice. And then the uh, front entry. Um, you know, you can really make these look good. But knowing that the stoop is our biggest problem is always my concern. Now I want to be very clear about this. I am not showing the contractor or builder's name or saying anything about them. Because actually looking at this, they do as good if not better of a job than any of the other ones I've seen in the area. So. This is not picking on any particular builder or building style other than everybody. So keep in mind that this is every house in this area is like this. And then every area has kind of got their own faults here and there. We've had some comments on the first video about, you know, uh, they've got inspections in certain cities for the stoop and for uh, pre-treat termite and stuff like that, which is great. That's better than it is right here. I know they don't. Codes doesn't take care of some of the stuff that we pointed out, which is sad because it should. There should be inspectors that make sure that it's done properly. It's funny that they'll, they'll spend so much effort, and this is just my opinion, you can get mad. They spend so much effort about uh, silt fence or something like that being exact when in my opinion the silt fence will make an environmental impact for just a short amount of time and some of these problems that we point out are long-term problems forever while the home is is there so it's sad that we put emphasis on certain things not to say that you shouldn't have silt fence and do it properly but if you're going to put that much effort into that then you should put effort into some of the other stuff that really matters as well Speaking of code enforcement, there goes a couple of inspectors. They're probably checking silt fences. Okay, I do want to talk about codes a little bit. So I'm going to play the devil's advocate here because I know kind of what's going on. And if I end up calling out some other company, I'm sorry, you should be doing it right. Um, when we purchased a company a little over a year ago, we ended up with this truck. I'm not gonna name any names. I'm not gonna say what exactly, you know, are the, the major issues, but here's the problem. We, one of the reasons why we wanted to purchase this other company is because they had several accounts that were pre-treat termite accounts, commercial or whatever. Um, so when we took over, we started bidding those projects and uh, we were expecting to get a bunch of them because we have the equipment and we're ready and set up to do them. You guys saw us do 
one if you didn't I'll put a link in the video uh, for that but uh, this truck sits and you guys need to understand that this truck sits by choice because we will not uh, lower our standards to what other companies are doing so you'll notice our trucks are very well marked very visible we don't have any problem being inspected or seen by Department of Ag this truck came like this no markings no license numbers on the outside no nothing and we've learned since we've had it besides the problems and the, the jankiness of the rig and the problems that they've they've occurred with it the garden hose sprayer thing instead of a real sprayer um, we learned really quick what was happening on site on the treatments versus what should have happened on site on the treatments so the reason why an unmarked truck is important in this discussion is because they and a lot of companies would go after hours claiming that they're not getting in the way of the subcontractors they have to go at night um, or on the weekends to do the treatment so that they weren't in the way you guys saw we went morning broad daylight middle of the day we did the treatment the way it was supposed to be done um, we haven't marked our truck yet because we just haven't used it that much but if we start using it there will be decals on it licenses everything so they go under the cover of oh we're just a truck with a camper shell instead of showing the spray rig in the back the way they had it set up there's no calibration there's no making sure that everything is done properly and that's one of the first things that your certified applicator license test will cover is proper equipment proper calibration I just can't stress enough how horribly done a lot of things are out there even if it's required just because people know how to cheat the system there's a reason why we have new equipment rebuilt pumps you know fresh fresh equipment it's so that it's calibrated properly um, I go through I went through this trailer you guys saw that and got everything revamped refreshed new hoses new fittings new whatever it needed to have it working properly one of the other things that we do on every termite rig that we have we have a flow meter so this connects to the hose and it shows exactly how much product is going through the hose into a certain measured area of ground on the termite pretreat video we spray painted squares so we know how many square feet and how many gallons go into those some people don't they just guess so that's one of the tricks um, we actually use a meter we'll spray paint it out we'll mark everything uh, it's easier on an existing home because you're trenching around the outside and you have to do a certain amount of gallons every 10 feet so that's pretty easy and that's why every one of our rigs has a flow meter it'll tell you down to a point or two two decimal places how close i am on the gallons the other thing that happens is this okay let's say this is a 50 gallon tank there's a 300 gallon tank in the big truck Let's say a job takes, like a pre-treat takes 650 gallons. If I go out there with this, I'm gonna have to refill it a whole bunch of times. If I go out there with that, I'm gonna have to refill it one point whatever times, just over two times. Um, we were told by other companies, you just have to figure out how to make 300 gallons work when it calls for 900 gallons, for example. So what does that mean? That means they're going to use less water. Does that mean they're using less product? So by the label, and we live by the label, on every product there's a label, and it will tell you exactly how much you can mix. There are different mix percentages. Sometimes there's a higher percentage or a lower percentage. The product we use has got one mix percentage, one ratio. Some of the more cost-effective products are gonna have a, a, a couple of mix ratios, so you could use a lower mix rate. But the problem with that is you're getting less product per square foot or per lineal foot or whatever you're spraying. If you're making 
300 gallons work where it's calling for 900 gallons, you're not getting as much product. So it's not going to do what the label is expecting it to do. And some of these products are super temperamental. If you don't mix them at the right ratio, it's like you're not doing anything at all. You're mixing water. Another trick of some of these guys is we never use dye on our regular jobs ever. This truck came all blue. That's what we call it, Smurfette. It's got dye dripping out the back and everywhere. Uh, they would get little bottles of dye that you can mix into the tank and it shows you it's marking dye. So it shows you where you're spraying. Less product, more dye, and it looks like you're doing your job is kind of the normal in this industry. So when we expected to run this truck every day, every couple of days or two or three times a week, um, it's not happening. Why is it not happening? Because when we price a job to do it right, when it's going to take 900 gallons and somebody else goes in there and prices it as if they're gonna use 300 gallons, we're never gonna be competitive. Now, is that right? Is that a fault on us? You guys can decide. Uh, we're not going to do anything that's not according to the label. So unfortunately, we're not gonna get as many of the pre-treat jobs in the area because there's too many guys out there that are willing to do it cheaper or not correct. So what's the risk? Brand new house, you do a termite treatment and you have to warranty it for a year. Some places they go two or three years, but you have to warranty it for that long. How many houses that you guys know have major issues within the first year? Like termite damage. There's hardly any. So the risk is very low for these guys. They go out, they put a bunch of marker or dye down, very little product, if any. And uh, they just do it, charge the builder what they want and they move on. They say they warranty it for a year and they do because you know what it takes a few years for termites to actually get to a new home so their risk is very low and they just they do it unfortunately that's not the right thing to do and that's not it's not how we want to do it so if the truck's going to sit you know it's paid for we didn't we didn't we don't have to worry about a loss on that but it'll sit until somebody wants to do it right it's going to sit so when, when we talked about code enforcement and inspections to make sure, what happens? If they do an inspection for a termite pretreat in this area, they will schedule the inspection for some time after the treatment has been done. Let's say they schedule it on a Monday morning. So the, the, the pest control person goes out, they spray Friday night or over the weekend or whenever, they leave, the inspector comes, he looks and he's like, oh yeah, it's blue or it's green, whatever dye they used. I see it everywhere, it looks good. Check. He wasn't there to make sure that they mixed properly, according to the label. He wasn't sure there to make sure that they used a uh, flow meter that told them how many gallons to put in each area. He wasn't there to measure it with them to make sure they did it right. There's a lot of things that he doesn't even care about. Did they use gloves? Did they? have the right license? Did they do any of that? He doesn't care. He's looking for dye and that's it. So if they do inspect for it, it doesn't mean that it was done properly. Unfortunately, if you see a company like us that has a, a big spray rig and it sits all the time, it doesn't mean that they're not good at selling or doing a pest control job. It means in our case that we're not going to do it wrong. That's the choice we made. So Ryan and I decided if we do it, we're doing it right. If they don't wanna pay for it to be done right, then that's fine. They can use somebody else. People can keep cheating the system. They can do whatever they want. So I went on a long rant, I'm sorry, but if you're looking at a pest control company, you should be watching their work. You should see the signs, the flags. This is a very marked truck. You can tell that we power spray because it's there. We're not driving a minivan or something that's all sealed up and you can't see. Uh, obviously, if I show up in a Volkswagen Beetle, I'm not gonna have all the equipment that we recommend that you have. So 
there's different levels. I'm sorry if I'm if I'm ranting or, or going on, but uh, that's some of the stuff that you have to look for in our industry, what we've seen, what we've heard. And uh, we'll continue to do things the way that we know is right and according to the label. And we'll continue to work with the uh, Department of Ag whenever they want to uh, double check our systems or check calibration or any of that. I'll keep rebuilding the pumps. I'll make sure that they're working properly, that they're not wasting product, that they're not leaking. Um, and I'll do my part. So that's what we can, we can promise our customers in this area. Hopefully whoever you guys use, if you're out of this area, um, hopefully they do the same. And if they don't, maybe you should ask them. You know, you're the customer. You should be able to demand what you want. So, sorry about the rant. I just wanted to explain a little bit, especially about codes, since, you know, people automatically think that if there's an inspection that it's done properly. It's not always the case, but in our industry, it's, it's one of the areas that they can get around. So, unfortunately, that's the truth. And I figured I'd get it out there. So, I guess bring on the haters, bring on the, the mean comments, uh, because we'll let our truck sit instead of working it the wrong way. But uh, that's gonna be it for today. I appreciate you guys listening and sticking it out through this long rant. And uh, we will see you guys on the next one.